black holes. They are mysterious and kind of scary. In the next few videos, we're going to talk about the idea of a black hole, the idea of approaching and entering a black hole, and also what happens when you actually travel closer to the speed of light, what you would actually be doing when you try to enter a black hole. This is What The Math, and welcome. Enjoy the video. Now, the reason I wanted to actually show you uh, Universe Sandbox 2 as well is because of this really cool simulation called Supernova in a Galaxy. So if I were to start this, this is what you would see. It would be uh, something like 5,000 years per second. You would see a supernova in right there and then it would actually dissipate and that's it. If you were to accelerate this, obviously you would see every single particle move as well. But I wanted to actually show this to you because it allows me to uh, basically give you an idea of how time around you accelerates. So I'm going to restart this again, uh, start paused, and here we go. We're going to basically go into the central supermassive black hole that's uh, very similar to in size to our black hole in the center of the Milky Way. And here it is. So this is that black hole that is um, in that particular region. Now, just to give you a sense of time, I'm also going to place a few stars around it that move uh, slightly, um, at basically at different locations around it uh, with possibly different orbital speeds as well. So there's one going to be here. There's one going to be here. Let's place the sun in here as well. So each of these stars will have different orbital velocity and they'll basically give you a, a better sense and better understanding of time. All right, so time has started. So now we are basically approaching a black hole. We're starting to experience a little bit of time dilation. And as we get closer and closer, the time dilation increases. Now, if you were to look around now, you would obviously not see any difference. Everything is still kind of frozen in time. But as you get closer and closer to that event horizon, your time dilation increases as well. Your time uh, on, on your spaceship, or on my spaceship in this case, doesn't really change. But to me, the rest of the universe changes. It starts moving a little bit faster. If I were to actually try to find one of those stars now, I would now be even able to see them move across the galaxy. They would actually start moving around me. And as I move closer to the black hole, the, that motion would actually accelerate. So if I were to look at them again, they would move even faster and, and faster and faster and faster. Now, this whole event would not take very long. This would only be maybe under a minute, possibly even 30 seconds. But if I would look really, really, really close and if I actually am fast enough at seeing things, I would be able to see the entire galaxy around me moving faster and faster and faster. And, and so if I were to actually look back now and try to find that supernova, I would realize that it, it, it's it's over there and it's actually increasing in um, in actual size as well. And there, there comes one of the first stars. So the stars around me move faster, the supernova expands faster. I would start seeing various stars disappearing and um, new stars appearing. And um, basically the entire galaxy around me would become um, fast forwarded. It would actually move uh, a lot faster than before. And you can see all of these particles that represent stars move around me as I'm approaching the um, event horizon. And as I get closer to it, it, things will get even faster and faster and more fast. And essentially, this is what you would experience the, uh, the closer you got to the event horizon. As I'm about to enter it, as I'm about to enter this event horizon, the entire universe spins around me super fast. And not just the galaxy, the entire universe. And my computer unfortunately cannot handle it, but this is essentially what you would experience right before hitting this magical spot of event horizon. And as soon as you cross the event horizon, things get even more interesting. We actually still are not completely certain what exactly goes on there, but what we understand about the physics and the effects is that uh, once you enter the event horizon, you're basically only facing one direction, right into the center of the black hole, the singularity. Even if you try to turn, you'll still be facing the center. Even if you try to move back, you'll still be facing the center. And right in front of you, you'll literally see everything, every historical event that has occurred and entered this black hole from the creation of the black hole. So basically all of these events that uh, 
come into the black hole, they will be right in front of you. You'll see the past, you'll see your birth, you'll see your death. Well, not your death because you technically you are in the black hole, but you'll see absolutely everything in the future and in the past right in, in front of you. And what's even more interesting is that as soon as you cross the black uh, hole event horizon, as soon as you cross it, the universe behind you ends. You literally reach the end of time. You will not be able to go back because there will be nothing to go back to. You will have literally crossed into a completely new reality. Another universe maybe, or possibly something completely different. And since time really can only go forward, or naturally only flows forward, uh, what happens after the event horizon is even more extreme. So time and space switch roles. So space no longer is as important, but time is, and time drags you toward the singularity. It actually drags you and pulls you toward the center, which is, of course, the singularity where the entire space is just wrapped around you. Now, we still don't really know what happens at the center, and we'll probably never really know because it's something that is impossible to define. But what is interesting is that crossing the event horizon means there's only one way for you, and that's, of course, toward the singularity. The infinitely small but at the same time infinitely massive point in space. Now another way of explaining all of this is of course using uh, the infamous Niagara Falls analogy. So imagine you're on a boat and you're moving toward the Niagara Falls um, and this is a Niagara Falls, of course, represents the event horizon. So uh, if you're still in the water, you can kind of paddle away from the actual Niagara Falls and you can kind of try to not fall, right? But as soon as you cross the event horizon, that's as if you were just over the edge of Niagara Falls. And essentially, as soon as you cross that edge, there's no other way but down toward the ground. And that's essentially you crossing the event horizon and approaching the singularity, which would be, of course, the ground. And whether you die in there or whether you actually live is a question we'll probably never answer as well, but chances are something happens to you and maybe something does occur. But I think to me what's really, really incredible is that once you cross the event horizon, you'll actually be able to see absolutely everything. The entire future, the entire past is going to be right in front of you. You'll be able to essentially explore or possibly go crazy from exploring all of these events that are right there. And the reason for this is because what is happening here is that this is called Event Horizon for a reason. From our perspective, which I'm going to explain to you in a second, nothing really ever reaches this Event Horizon. But from a perspective of a person, Anton in this case, who actually crosses the event, he will get to witness everything, every event that has ever reached this black hole at the same time as he is progressing toward the singularity. But I think to explain this a little bit more, I need to actually take the other perspective, the perspective of Anton's sister, Antonia, who stayed at that star and has never actually been adventurous enough to try to reach the black hole. So what happens to uh, Antonia? What does she actually see? And that's actually something completely different. This is yet another mystery of the black holes that will take us quite a while to, ex uh, to explain. So let's just say Antonia is orbiting around the same black hole, but Antonia is actually on a planet and just wants to see how her brother Anton does. And so she's right here on this imaginary planet of Mars that is orbiting around the same black hole, but uh, she, she counts her time differently. She counts her time in seconds per second. So her time basically never really changes. And what Antonia is going to be watching from Mars is uh, her brother Anton taking off on one of the moons of uh, Mars, which is of course Phobos. Now, this is Phobos and it's going to be moving directly into the black hole at the speed of, initial speed of 10 kilometers per second. Now, just to demonstrate how the time is going to progress here, we're going to make this um, uh, Phobos, we're going to make him spin a little bit faster. As a matter of fact, it's going to spin once every second. So here is Phobos flying toward the black hole and it's spinning one, once every second. Anton is somewhere in the middle trying to hold on and not to fly away from Phobos. Unfortunately, it's kind of dark and black, but that's okay. And so what she's going to be seeing from Mars, from her observational point right there, is this really, really fastly spinning object moving toward the black hole. So we're going to accelerate time just a little bit. And remember, this is still uh, regular time, regular speed. Uh, just we're going to accelerate just so it gets closer to the black hole and uh, as it gets closer and closer to the black hole its velocity will start increasing as well and what's going to happen to it is really interesting. As Anton approaches the black hole closer and closer and also as his speed accelerates uh, toward the speed of light 
what she would actually start seeing is Anton getting darker and darker, redder and redder, and this is something called redshift, but at the same time, she would actually start seeing him move a lot slower. So this is why I actually decided to introduce the rotational speed here, because I can show you that things for her, for Antonia, would look like Anton is actually moving um, in slow motion now. And as he got closer to the black hole, he would start moving even slower and slower and slower. At some point where uh, he gets closer to the event horizon, um, not only would he be very, very red and very, very dark, but he would also start moving at half the speed. Then he would get even darker and slower and darker and slower and darker and slower. So at some point, the speed of Anton would actually slow down. It would look like, if this was a smaller black hole, it would look like he would actually be stretched and pulled. And right before the event horizon, it would actually look like he totally and completely froze in time and disappeared because what would happen is that he would actually get so stretched and so redshifted that no more uh, radiation, no more um, any kind of uh, information would actually reach a Antonia from, from the event horizon and it would basically look like he just froze right above the event horizon and froze in time. But the interesting thing is that sh that's all she would see. She would see a frozen... Phobos, just frozen in time, that is being bombarded by all kinds of particles orbiting around uh, or moving around black hole or all kinds of Hawking radiation just bombarding this uh, poor Phobos that's frozen in time and uh, this entire object would basically just burn in, in a very interesting and very very painful looking death. So for Antonia, Anton would most likely just disappear into nothingness, never to return. And not only would it actually look that way, but th that's actually exactly what happened. From her perspective, Anton has now frozen in time and has basically been kind of slowly roasted by Hawking radiation, by all kinds of um, high energy particles that actually do move around the um, the event horizon here in this vicinity. And essentially for, for her, her brother would be, or her twin brother would be actually gone. But for him, she would be gone. And this is where things get really, really interesting and really, really tricky. So for Antonia, her brother is frozen right above the black hole and is slowly removed from existence by the things right above the event horizon. But at the same time, he has become invisible and is no longer detectable for her because all of his um, waves and all of his radiation that's emitted from his body has actually now been redshifted into infinitely long rays of radiation. Whereas for Anton, who actually entered the black hole, his sister is dead. She's died of old age, waiting for him to return, and the entire universe is also dead as well. And this is where things get really complicated, because how can two events happen? How can things actually e exist in two completely different realities? And I think the word here is reality. So the actual frame is really important. This is the so-called black hole information paradox, where no, you're not really a clone, you're not actually, there's no two copies of you, and yes, you are in two places at once, but because in Antonia's reality, the story ended with Anton being right above the horizon. In her world, her universe, this is what happens and this is the truth. But in Anton's reality, where he actually entered the black hole, his other reality ended. Antonia disappeared and he entered a completely new universe, completely new reality where things don't really obey the same physics, but at the same time, he actually is in a completely different world now. And in his new world, he can actually see the entire universe from the beginning to the end, but he's also required to move into one direction, the infinity of singularity right in the middle of the black hole. What happens then? We don't really know, but essentially he is still alive in his frame of uh, reality, but not in his sister's frame of reality. But anyway, that's kind of what I wanted to leave you with, just to think about it, and in the next one of the future videos, at least, we're going to actually explore this in more detail as I find more simulations and more video games that allow me to explore this visually. So let's actually see Phobos uh, entering the black hole, and let's see what happens to Phobos as it enters the black hole. But just think about it, how crazy is that? You can actually have two frames of reality, and this is actually what general relativity tells us, that it's always about where you are, not where everyone else is. 
So your frame is your world, it's your universe. And if your universe moves into the black hole, that's where it's going to stay. If your universe is on Mars orbiting the black hole, that's where it's going to stay. And this is uh, where things get a little bit tricky. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed this video. And if you did, don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to share this and like this video as well. Also check out some of the other Universe Unbox 2 videos that I've posted previously. And most importantly, support the developers. Su support the developers of Universe Unbox. Purchase the game if you still haven't. Or go and download and possibly donate to the uh, developer of Space Engine because it's, it's absolutely free it's awesome and he basically just asks for optional donations and in the next video i'm going to actually demonstrate to you what happens when you move um, at the speed of light because i just found an amazing simulation that allows you to see that and also i would like to thank all of you that actually support me on patreon and all your support actually means a lot because it does help this channel grow it helps me make better videos it helps me purchase equipment that i would otherwise be unable to purchase to um, improve sound to improve video quality and so on thank you so much again uh, your names will never be forgotten they'll be actually with these videos forever and this universe and this galaxy has also been destroyed by time, just like it was in Anton's reality inside the black hole. Thank you for watching, guys. Came you later. And as always, bye-bye.